Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. So far, I have completed four problems on sequencing. In this video, fifth problem I am going to explain. So you might have seen that every problem not so difficult, but don't underestimate. You need practice. Only watching the video, listening the lecture, that will not be enough. After watching the video, you must try the problems independently. And one more suggestion I'll give to my students. Always keep the running notes. When I explain something important, make it a note. Write it down immediately. Then only you can be able to remember. Otherwise, by the time examination, you may forget it. So always maintain the notes and practice a lot. Now, before starting the fifth problem, uh, I expect that my viewers are having the hard copy. Print out of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep the problems ready. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. Come on, see the problem number five. A company is faced with seven tasks and uh, that have to be processed through two machines. Find the optimal sequence of the jobs to process and find the total completion time, idle time of machines and waiting time of the jobs. Previous problem we have calculated the minimum total elapsed time and idle time of machines. But in this problem one more new point is there. It is asking you to calculate the waiting time of the jobs. That is the extra point in this problem. The task, task means job. The tasks are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So totally seven jobs are there. For each job passing through two machines, first M1 and then M2. And the processing times are given. For example, A task 2.58, 3.47. Like that all the tasks are given. First of all, we need to calculate the total elapsed time, sorry, sequence, optimum sequence. So here, task A, B, C, D up to G and the time M1 and M2, whatever is given in the problem, the same thing I have taken. The first job is to select the smallest processing time. The smallest time in all these times, you will find 1.11. This is for the task G and on machine M2. If the smallest time happens to be on first machine, we have to assign from left. If the processing minimum time is on second machine, then assign to the last, that means right side. Here it is G task on M2 machine. So this G task will be assigned in the last cell. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven cells we have made. The last cell we will write down G because it is on the second machine. If it had been on the first machine, we would have taken in the first cell. First machine left side, second machine right side. Now remaining times. Now leave this G. Now take A, B, C, D, E, F up to F all the times. Now find out what is the minimum time in this processing times. It is 1.66. But 1.66 is for the job B and on which machine? M1. M1 means we have to assign from the left first cell. So this B task should be assigned in the first cell. And already in the last cell we have already assigned G. Now what are the remaining times? Two jobs are completed that is B and G. The remaining jobs are A, C, D, E, F. Again, we have taken all the time estimates. Now, what is the minimum time? The minimum time is 1.73. This is for job F. On which machine? Second machine. Second machine means we have to assign from the right. Already on the right side, one job is there, G. So before G, we will take F. We'll take F. So F, G. Right? Next. The remaining times are, now three jobs are completed, B, F, G. The remaining are A, C, D, E. 
Now in this, what is the minimum time? 1.99 for which task on which machine? This is for task D. But second machine, second machine means again from right side. Already two right side we have taken. Now we take D also before F. D will be assigned before F. So B, D, F, G. Four tasks are completed. The remaining are 1, 2, 3. The remaining time estimates are A, C, E. Note down the timings and find out what is the minimum. The minimum time happens to be 2.41. For which job? C. On which machine? M2. M2 means again from the right side. The right side already we have assigned D, F, G. So before D, we assign C. C. So C, D, F, G, then B. How many unoccupied cells are there? Two. Still two more jobs are there. A and E. Note down the timings and find out what is the minimum time in this two. 2.58 for job A on machine M1. M1 means from left side. Already left side we have assigned B. Only one assigned. So after B, we take A. After B, we take A. Now only one cell is left. That unoccupied cell, the remaining cell, will be assigned the remaining job. Which is the remaining job? E. So remaining cell is this one. So after A, we will take E. So ultimately, the optimum sequence of completing all the jobs are B, A, E, C, D, F, G. So if we follow this path or this sequence, what will happen? The total elapsed time will be minimum. That is our objective of solving this problem. The minimum total lapse time and the idle time of machines and idle time of tasks are calculated as follows. First job is completed. We have calculated, we have found out the optimum sequence. Now, time estimates, total elapsed time. Here, the first column, task. Second column, machine M1, M2. In this sub columns, in, out, in, out. In, out means starting time of the job. Out means ending time, finishing time of the jobs. Last column, idle time on M2. There is no idle time. Idle time on M1 is there, but in between we don't have. Once M1 start functioning, it will not stop in between till the completion of the last job. So in between we don't have any idle time for M1 machine. Only last we have to calculate idle time that easily we can do. But for M2 machine, in between also idle time may happen that's why one separate column is there now the task the optimum sequence will take b a e c d f g b a e c d f g optimum sequence always the first uh, i mean job will start at zero hour at zero time we start our job so what is the processing time for b on m1 task b on M1 is 1.66 so it will start from 0 and end at 1.66 immediately after completing this 1.66 it will start the second job so from 1.66 AM1 what is AM1 2.58 now if you add 1.66 plus 2.58 you'll get 4.24 now it will start at 4.24 EM1 E M1 is 3.38. Add 3.38, you'll get 7.62. From 7.62, CM1. CM1 is 2.71. So add up 2.71, you'll get 10.33. Now 10.33. DM1. What is DM1? 5.52. So add up 5.52, you'll get 15.85. 15.85 will start. Now FM1. How much is F M1 5.22? Add up 5.22, you'll get 21.07. From 21.07, G M1. How much is G M1? 2.89. Add up 2.89, you'll get 23.96. So starting time 0, ending time 23.96. In between this, there is no idle time for M1 machine. 
right that you have to remember now m2 machine will start only when the job on m1 is completed so m1 is completed at 1.66 so m2 will begin at 1.66 it will not start from zero only after completing the work on m1 then m2 will start so here 1.66 the so first 1.66 hours m2 machine was idle because only after doing the job on m1 m2 will start the so 1.66 hours m2 machine was idle here idle time on m2 now b m2 how much is b m2 5.84 so add a 1.66 plus 5.84, you'll get 7.5. Now, now you have to check whether the next job will start at 7.5 or 4.24. The A job was completed at 4.24, but it cannot start. The machine M2 cannot start at 4.24 because first job is completing at 7.5. So whichever is higher. 7.5 or 4.24 so 7.5 is higher here the job is waiting the job a job a task is waiting because it was completed at 4.24 but it is not starting at 4.24 it is starting at 7.50 right so here the task is waiting then 7.50 it will start what is the a m2 a M2 is 3.47. So if you add up 3.47, you'll get 10.97. Right? Now 10.97 or 7.62. Whichever is higher, 10.97. So it will start the next job at 10.97. EM2. What is EM2? It is 7.62. Add up 7.62. 10.97 plus 7.62. 18.59. Now 18.59 or 10.33, whichever is higher, 10.59 is higher. So it will start at 10.59, right? Now C M2, C M2 how much? Uh, 2.41. So add up 2.41, you'll get 21. So now 21 or 15.85, whichever is higher, 21 is higher. So it will start at 21. D M2. What is DM2? 1.99. So add up 21 plus 1.99. 22.99. Now 22.99 or 21.07. Whichever is higher. 22.99 is higher. FM2. FM2 is 1.73. Add up 1.73. You'll get 24.72. Now 24.72 or 23.96. Whichever is higher. 24.72 is higher. Now GM2. What is GM2? 1.11. So add up 1.11, you'll get 25.83. So the total elapsed time is 25.83. The work started at 0 hour and ended 25.83. The total elapsed time, the total minimum elapsed time is 24.83. One answer we got. Now what is the idle time on machine M1? In between, there is no idle time for machine M1. But last, the total elapsed time happens to be 25.83. But when the work was completed on M1 machine, 23.96. M1 has completed its job at 23.96. Now find out the difference. 25.83 minus 23.96, you will get 1.87 R. 1.87 R is the idle time for M1. Now idle time for M2. You can see in between the machine is not stopping because it has completed the work at 7.5. Immediately at 7.5 it has started the next one. 10.97, 10.97. There is no stoppage. Then 18.59, 18.59, 21, 21, 22.99, 22.99, 24.72, 24.72. So in between, there is no stoppage of M2. So what is the total elapsed time, uh, total uh, idle time for M2? 1.66 hours. So we have completed the total elapsed time and idle time. The new point it is asking you in the problem is, what is the waiting time for the task? For, so here, waiting time for the jobs. 
टास्क का बी ए सी डी एफ जी ऑप्टिमम सीक्वेंस द फर्स्ट जॉब देर इज नो देर इज नो वेटिंग टाइम फॉर द फर्स्ट जॉब इट इज स्टार्टिंग एट जीरो आर ओनली सो देर इज नो वेटिंग टाइम फॉर फर्स्ट जॉब दैट इज जॉब नंबर बी नाउ वी स्टार्ट द ए जॉब नाउ यू सी ए जॉब वॉज फिनिश एट फोर पॉइंट टू फोर एट फोर पॉइंट टू फोर द वर्क इज ओवर फॉर ए जॉब ऑन मशीन एम वन बट द वर्क ऑन सेकेंड मशीन वॉज स्टार्टेड एट टेन पॉइंट सेवन पॉइंट फाइव जीरो दैट मीन्स फ्रॉम फोर पॉइंट टू फोर टू सेवन पॉइंट फाइव जीरो दिस जॉब इज वेटिंग विच जॉब इज वेटिंग ए तो सब्ट्रैक्ट सेवन पॉइंट फाइव जीरो माइनस फोर पॉइंट टू जीरो सेवन पॉइंट फाइव जीरो माइनस फोर पॉइंट टू जीरो थ्री पॉइंट टू सिक्स दैट इज द वेटिंग टाइम फॉर जॉब ए नो सिमिलरली जॉब ई सी है जॉब ई द वर्क वॉज कंप्लीटेड एट सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स टू बट हियर एम टू इज स्टार्टिंग एट टेन पॉइंट नाइन सेवन तो हियर टेन पॉइंट नाइन सेवन माइनस सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स टू यू गेट थ्री पॉइंट थ्री फाइव दैट इज द वेटिंग टाइम फॉर जॉब ई ना जॉब सी जॉब सी द कंप्लीटेड वर्क एट टेन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री बट द वर्क ऑन एम टू वॉज स्टार्टेड एट एटीन पॉइंट फाइव नाइन तो एटीन पॉइंट फाइव नाइन माइनस टेन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री यू विल गेट थ्री एट पॉइंट टू सिक्स नेक्स्ट C or not D. The work was completed on M one fifteen point eight five. The work, but the work was started at M two at twenty one. So twenty one minus fifteen point eight five. You will get five point one five, right? Then next after that F. The work was completed twenty one point zero seven. But here the work is started at twenty two point nine nine. So twenty two point nine nine. Minus twenty one point zero seven, you'll get one point nine two. Last job, the last job was star completed at twenty three point nine six, but here the work is started at twenty four point seven two. So twenty four point seven two minus twenty three point nine six, you'll get zero point seven six. This is the waiting time for jobs. That's all. So this is the end of problem number. Five totally five problems we have done. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.